Okay, let's talk about basis vectors for a little bit. So in general, uh, what is most commonly used in Rn for whatever n are, is this notation, this little E1, E2, E3, it would go all the way to En. In this case, we're gonna stay in R3. These are basis vectors for R3. Basically, any point in R3 is gonna be coded up as ABC, right? Um, if you can look at this. So here's, it, we're doing these row vectors, so you would, a vector in R3 would be something that looked like this. And these basis vectors will generate this by simply doing this. A E1 plus B E2 plus C E3. This will create this vector. So we say that uh, these are a basis vector for, in this case, R3. Incidentally, notationally, oftentimes there's little arrows over them just to make sure that people know their vectors. Uh, this board and these pens aren't really conducive to making lots of little arrow, uh, lots of little arrows. So as long as it seems like the context will make it clear what I'm talking about, I probably will leave them off in this anyway. In R3, these basis vectors are usually expressed as i, j, k, which you probably remember from your physics class. And incidentally, here's some great things about these things. So if you dot them, uh, i dot i, j dot j, k dot k, these are all equal to one. And they're also uh, orthogonal to each other because i dot j equals j dot i equals zero as the rest of them. So here's a fabulous thing about these things. They're orthogonal, they're orthonormal. The, the norm of this is just one. These have a lot of really nice properties. And by and large, we set up our original problems in these orthonormal bases. However, where we're gonna go um, with single value decomposition and in particular eigenvalues and eigenvectors, a lot of times it's better to have a different basis, uh, especially and in particular when you go to uh, PCAs, principal component uh, analysis. So I wanna start introducing this, but before we do that, I wanna talk about one little thing since we were just talking about expansion of determinants, and that is how you do a cross product. And I have uh, this fabulous example right here. Suppose we have these vectors. Um, we'll let V1, oh, we'll just call it V. So V is going to be 1, 1, 0. And U is going to be 0, 1, 1. Uh, how do you do a cross product? Well, you set it up like this. You do I, J, K. And you're going to take the determinant of this after you lay these vectors in here. So this is going to be 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1. And then I'm going to do this expansion by minors. So remember, in this first position, it's going to be 1, minus 1, and 1 from how we had it before. This is A11, this is A12, this is A13. In front of everything that we're going to do, we're going to be putting negative 1 to 1 plus 1 or 1 plus 2 or 1 plus 3. It turns out, especially when you do this a million times, the first one, if you expand by the top row, is going to be 1, then it's going to be minus 1, then it's going to be 1. So I'm just not going to write that step down. So this expansion out, this is going to be i times the minor of i. And the minor of i, it's, you take everything out of this row in this column. The minor is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Then it's going to be minus j, because remember, minus 1 to the 1 plus 2 is minus 1 to the 3. It's negative. And we are going to expand it. Uh, we're going to multiply it by its minor. Take everything away from the row and column. So what's left is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And now we're going to put k in. And negative 1 to the 1 plus 3 is to the fourth power, so it's just 1. So I'm going to put plus k. And its respective minor, we take out the row. The column is 1, 1, 0, 1. And now, of course, we're going to find the determinants of these. 1 times 1 is 1, minus 1 times 0 is just 1. So this term is i. It's i times 1. Minus 1 times 1, minus 0 times 0, it's just minus j times 1. So this is minus j. And uh, actually, let me. Well, I, can, I, I guess that's fine. I was going to put these right under each other so it was nice and clear, but hopefully it'll be clear. And then it's going to be plus k times 1 times 1 minus 0 times 1 is 1 minus 0. So this is going to be 
plus k. And so once again, in physics, you are probably uh, very familiar with seeing this. This would code up as this vector, 1 minus 1 and 1. So these are synonymous, and this is how you, how you write vectors with IJK code. This tends to be more physics, but you'll probably see it. I would like you to notice something about this. So, and here's the notation. So we're going to call this V cross U, and this is going to be 1, negative 1, and 1. If you look at this, uh, so what is V dot V cross U? Well, it's going to be 0. Because if you dot these together, it's going to be 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, plus 0 times 1 is 0. 1 and negative 1 is 0, plus 0 is 0. Uh, you'll also find, if you do this, that u dot v cross u is also 0. Here is what you just did. Um, so a small thing here. Remember, when you dot two vectors together, you get a scalar. You get a number, right? When you cross product two vectors together, you get a vector. Not only do you get a vector, you get a vector that is perpendicular to both of the vectors that you crossed. Um, we're probably not going to do a lot more with cross product. I just wanted you to see it, and just in case it shows up sometime later, we'll be back.